countdown to blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. Tonight, we take you some 800 years into the future to meet man's best friend. Well, what's the matter? Who's there? What? Oh, turn on the annunciator. All right, I'm coming. I'm coming. Well, stand in front of the screen. I can't see you. I am in front of the screen, Mr. Schnee. You haven't turned up the viewing control. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there you are. Do I know you? May I be the first to congratulate you, Mr. Schnee? You may indeed. What for? Oh, you haven't heard the news. Good, then I shall be the first. I imagine I got a head start on the others because of my superior facilities for locating you. Your address wasn't given. These pronouncements do tend to be a bit vague. It's a matter of tradition, I suppose. I haven't heard any news for days. I've been listening to my sound tapes and, uh, <laughs> and meditating. Now, wait a minute. I'll let you in. Oh. Oh, the auto burster must have forgotten to pay the doorbell. Have to open it manually. Uh, just a minute. All right. You, uh, can come in now. Well, I suppose you don't know who I am, well, you are wearing the uniform of an upper echelon salesman. I just wanted to warn you, nobody can force me to buy anything. I'm a free citizen. Oh, now, come, Mr. Snape. I suppose the big news is I'm the lucky householder to whom the little gem room expander will first be offered. Oh, nothing of the sort. I'm not a common salesman. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice your merchant prince badge. <laughs> come in, have a chair. No, 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 not that one. It's my meditator. It's still running. Oh, thank you. Well? Mr. Schnee, our prognosticator has just given its fortnightly prognostication. You are going to be our new ruler. Congratulations. I'm sure you'll be a splendid one, too. But wait, uh, what's to become of the old ruler? You're scheduled to dispose of him sometime this month. Now, Mr. Schnee, allow me to introduce myself. I am Biedrich Florier, vice president of the Munitions and Container Corporation. Here I have our latest model in this case right here. There we are. Beautiful, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, if you will only agree to shoot Overlord Kip with a Floria Semper Fidelis gun, my corporation will be happy to place a substantial amount of credit at your disposal in any bank you choose. Six billion, to be exact. Now, if you'll just sign here on the dotted line... Nonsense! Oh, come now, Mr. Schnee. Even a ruler can use money. Bribery for government officials, bread and circuses for the people. Oh, money's a very useful commodity, Mr. Schnee. Shall we say, uh... Seven billion? I don't doubt that money is useful, but when I said nonsense, I meant the prognosticator. Mr. Schnee? The whole thing is a lot of, well, nonsense. A whole planet of supposedly intelligent people listening to what's really more uh, an oracle. A machine can't read the future. It's impossible. Oh, dear, 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 Mr. Schnee, that, that sacrilege. You, you can't talk. Confound it, sir. You can't talk that way about the machine. Listen, after all, it's... Let's look at this reasonably. Machines can and do answer all the problems of our daily life. So why shouldn't a superior machine be able to tell the future? If you ask me behind the wires and gimmicks and whatnots of the machine, there's a secret room in which a half-mad, half-intoxicated old priestess 
sits delivering her Delphic pronouncements. Might as well have an above-board oracle and be done with it. Now, now, Mr. Schnee, even our ruler shouldn't flout the authority of machinery. Of course, it's all right when you're alone with friends like me, but, but in public you shouldn't. Mr. Schnee, I'm from the Daily Disseminator. How does it feel to be ruler prognosticate? Perhaps you'd tell us in your own words. Oh, that's what I get for leaving the enunciator on. There's your community. All right, all right. I'll answer it. Hello. Mr. Schnee? Yeah. I'm Overlord Kip. I uh, understand you have a young man who is destined to dispose of me and take my place. Well, honestly, Your Honorship, I haven't the slightest... Uh, you'll make it swift and painless, won't you? Uh, suppose you come around to the palace around one o'clock or so. We can have a bite of lunch and discuss the matter together. After all, I think you'd agree that I have been a reasonably good ruler, so I have the right to die with dignity. Oh, absolutely. No question of that. I, I think it's a very good idea having a chat about it first. It, it is awkward to dispose of someone you haven't met previously. Thank you, Mr. Snay. I hope you'll find your successor as cooperative as yourself. Hmm. I wonder whether he wants me to make an appointment so he'll have a band of counter-assassins ready to kill me. You know, that would save him the expense of a standby guard. He's pretty tight, you know. He wouldn't dream of doing anything of the sort. Overlord Kit knows what's due his position. He has a sense of duty and responsibility, which unfortunately seems to be lacking in his successor, if you'll excuse me speaking frankly. I am, of course, considerably older than you, and so I feel... It's quite all right. You may speak freely. Furthermore, if he had you killed, the people would probably give him a painful and lingering death for attempting to interfere with a course of destiny. Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of the people, the polo will probably be around uh, to hail their new leader soon. You really should work up a few well-chosen words. Well, I'm not going to do it. They can't make me kill him and take over, and that is flat. I am not the administrative type. I never have been. Well, in that case, the people will probably kill you for attempting to interfere with fate. Have a cigar? But I wouldn't have done anything. There are sins of omission as well as commission. Come now, it's true. A ruler's life expectancy isn't very long. At least it hasn't been the last few reigns. But it's longer than yours will be if you refuse to fulfill your destiny. I wouldn't make a fit ruler. Consider my origins. I wouldn't tell this to anyone but you. I'm illegitimate. I don't even know who my father is. It's a wise child who knows his own father. And some of the most celebrated leaders in history have been illegitimate. Look at William the Conqueror, Alexander Hamilton. I don't Look. think that's too much of a recommendation. You see, almost anyone can be a leader. The important thing is that he be destined for leadership. But I'm no good at it. Everybody says so. I've never done a thing in my life. My aged mother has had to work to support me. Well, it's time enough that you stood on your own two feet, my boy. Remember, destiny must take its course. Oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm due on radio monitor in a few seconds. If you don't mind, I'll broadcast from here. I'll just check my equipment here. Uh, fine, fine. Now, here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> my friends, allow me to introduce to you your new ruler, Gervais Schnee. He is planning to assassinate Overlord Kip with a Floria Semper Fidelis gun. Floria Semper Fidelis guns retail from credit 2.98 for the peasant's pistol, all up to credit 1089.98 for the super deluxe conspirator's model. But each is the best attainable for the price. Mr. Schnee will, of course, use the super deluxe model. And now I give you Mr. Schnee. Uh, right into here? Hmm? Oh, anywhere. It's uh, non-directional. Oh. <clears throat> uh, thank you for your, uh, for your confidence and support. I only hope I prove worthy of it. That's all. Thank you, ruler prognosticate Gervais Schnee. <laughs> some more wine, Mr. Schnee. Oh, no, thank you, Overlord Kip. I've had too much already. It's a delightful vintage, isn't it? I think it was bought by Overlord Jasper about seven rings ago. You'll find the cellars in perfect order. I'll give you the inventory and uh, the key a little later. Uh, do we... Do we have to talk about it? Oh, well, one has to take these things as they come, you know. Here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, you know, that reminds me. Uh, will tomorrow suit you? 
Well, of course, it really doesn't make any difference to me. All right, then. We'll set it for tomorrow, if that's convenient for both of us. I uh, have the afternoon clear. We'll make a public announcement uh, a little later. Well, all right, if you say so. Uh, of course. And uh, now we can go into my study and discuss the details at our leisure. I, uh, I've got half a box of some wonderful cigars left over. I think you'll enjoy them. Oh, Mr. Schnee. Mr. Schnee, you aren't ready yet. Well, I, I can't button the top button of this uniform. Oh, isn't it handsome? Black and silver... The traditional assassin's uniform. Uh, it was made for me without charge by Hanson and Cruster, uh, the tailor. Yes, of course, of course. It's, it's the curse these days, you know, the over-commercialization of important public functions. Oh, wait a minute, I have your pistol ready here. Uh, <laughs> I bet you're excited. Couldn't sleep last night, eh? No, well, yes, I did talk a bit. <laughs> well, I, I see you're getting telegrams. Isn't that nice? Had your breakfast? Oh, uh, well, I... I don't think I'm exactly in the mood for eating. Oh, you should, you know. A good breakfast makes good aim. Well, I really couldn't eat a thing. Well, you will have a fine lunch after it's all over. Uh, I saw your black and silver limousine, Fedora. What? I don't have a black and silver limousine. You do now. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, there's going to be a brass band along. There'll be crowds cheering. Oh, it's such a lovely morning. You, uh, you've hired two removers, I trust. Removers. Yes, yes, I think so. Good. Uh, oh, what pageantry. The black and silver limousine. Yourself in your lovely uniform. The black cloak and hood of the body removers sitting beside the chauffeurs. Silent. The band playing the funeral march as you move down the boulevard. Crowds cheering. Little children that are of school presenting you with flowers and, and television cameras. Oh, what a sight. What a sight. Well, now it's about 10.30. Shall we be off? Well, come on, come on. Get out of the car, Mr. Schnee. I don't feel so good. Well, come on now. The television cameras are ready. There we are. Just a moment. <coughs> now, ruler prognosticate Schnee... <laughs> Allow me to load your super deluxe conspirators, Gloria Semper Fidelis gun for you. Already loaded. I'm supposed to do it now for the cameras. It's already loaded. Permit me to check it, then? It's perfectly all right, I tell you. No, 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 don't touch it. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, nobody would have any difficulty loading a Semper Fidelis gun. Oh, yeah, that's right, yes, of course. Whether you buy the peasants or the conspirators model... Both have the same freeloading mechanism. Here we are, candy, popcorn, hot shish, yogurt, buy your refreshments here. Program, sometimes you can't tell the assassins from the cops without a program. Get your program for the program. All right, Shanae, it's time. Let's go. Again, eh? Uh, Overlord Kip, I am officially here. Uh, well, now, uh, just a minute, old man. I have my speech, you know. Your speech? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, really. Well, that's all right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before the conclusion of this ceremony, I wish to remind you of a few important facts concerning my reign, which comes to an end in just a few minutes. I call your attention to the budget of 2786. 83 billion credits against an outgo of 72 billion. Not to mention the dam across the Balga River, which was constructed three months short of the proposed five-year date at a cost of 73 billion. I thank you. Well, that's it, old man, eh? Are you all done? Why, uh, yes, I think I've covered everything. Well, uh, goodbye and good luck, Overlord Schnee. Anytime you're ready. You mean now? Well, come along, old man. The networks have only cleared an hour. There's a commercial program starting in three minutes. Get on with it. Well, all right. 
Here goes. Everyone will now please leave while the removers take over. But the television, the cameras, it's part of the ceremony. Why can't they televise the removal? Everybody leave immediately! They're all gone now, Overlord Schnee. Uh, perhaps... You, too. But after all... Out! I want to meditate. Well... Very well. All right. Oh, alone at last. Kip. Kip. Overlord Kip. Phew. I don't think I'd have been able to stay still much longer. You all right? Stay, you're a good shot. That blank really stung on a very tender spot, I might add. No, no, no time for chatting. We've got to get this over in a hurry. Now comes the part where your friends will have to look like real removers. I hope they can give it the professional touch. Don't worry about us. We are real removers. At least both of us have participated in removals. I'll uh, take off my hood. But wait. Why, you're Overlord Morehouse. I've seen you in pictures. Mm -hmm. And the other one. You're Shinnick. You died before I was born. That is, you were supposed to have died. Both of you were. Uh, Morehouse was supposed to have killed you. Well, we're not precisely dead. Only retired, you might say. The prognosticator didn't say he had to be killed, you know, just disposed of. As Kip undoubtedly pointed out to you in your little interview together. Sorry I couldn't tell you the truth, old man, but you might have changed your mind and given us away. We've formed a little club of dead overlords. We're looking forward to the day when you join us, Overlord Schnee. Well, you better hurry. If the four of us are discovered, the mob will tear us to pieces. Oh, you're right. Uh, get on the stretcher, Kip. Bad enough, we're going to have to carry you out. At least don't expect us to lift you up. Floria? Yes, Your Honorship? The prognosticator is right here in the palace, isn't it? Yes, Your Honorship. Lead me to it immediately. Certainly, Your Honorship. It's this way. Here you are, Your Honorship. This is the prognosticator. Twenty stories high, a hundred meters wide, the center of our entire civilization. Leave me. I would be alone with the prognosticator. But, but, but Your Honorship... Leave I... me. And take all the technicians with you. Yes. Yes, Your Honorship. <laughs> Now, Your Honorship. You too. Leave me. Well, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honorship. Your wishes are my command. Well. Open up, it's me, Gervais. Open up. Oh, all right, all right. Don't rush me, don't rush me. Oh, it's you, is it? Let me in. Well, hurry up. Don't want any of these nosy scientists around. <laughs> well, what do you want? Hmm. Still the same old place, huh? Teapot. Your crystal ball has dust on it. And why don't you get yourself a new pack of gypsy cards? And please get rid of that old overstuffed horror. That old overstuffed horror is a rare old psychoanalyst couch. You see that hole? That's the original stuffing. But what is that smell? That's not tea you're drinking, it's gin. Why, of course it is. Nice to see you, Sonny. It's about time you came to pay your old mother a visit. <laughs> I kind of thought something like this would stir you up. <laughs> Mother, you know you shouldn't have done it. What'd I do? You fixed the prognostications, that's what you did. 
Well, though, why you had to pick on me, I'll... Oh, I got tired of supporting you. You're a big boy, and it's about time you earned your own living. Besides, I thought it'd be a good idea to elect a sympathetic administration. Sympathetic to me, that is. Palace needs a new ventilating system. The air in here is terrible. Well, why didn't you use the prognosticator to get new ventilation put in? Oh, they'd have gotten around it the same way you got around killing Kip. But you pay attention to the prognosticator, boy. Don't you try to weasel out of what it says by looking for double meanings. It's time you overlords learned that when the prognosticator says something, it means it. Yes, Mother. I'd hate to have to give orders to have my own boy disposed of. The last three disposals weren't so bad. But sometimes those disposals can turn out real messy. Yes, Mother. Oh, maybe blood is thicker than water, but not much. Yes, Mother. And why shouldn't you listen to my prognostications, huh? Just because they're dolled up a little doesn't mean they're not true. Don't I have a crystal ball? Don't I have a gypsy card pack? Don't I have tea leaves? <laughs> Best tea leaves money can buy. Yes, Mother. Uh, so, what are you going to do? I'm going to have the ventilating system attended to right away. Now that's my boy. Now, I'll look at these here tea leaves in the bottom of my cup of gin. Yes, Mother. I can see that everything is going to work out fine. Just fine. <laughs> you have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine which this month features The Hardest Bargain by Evelyn Smith. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, X-1 has brought you Man's Best Friend, a story from the pages of Galaxy, written by Evelyn Smith, and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were William Redfield as Schnee, Wendell Holmes as Floria, Santos Ortega as Kip, and Leona Powers as Mother, with Raymond Edward Johnson and Bob Hastings. Your announcer, Radcliffe Hall. With this broadcast, X-1 concludes its present series. The show will return to the air on Thursday, June 20th. Check your local radio listings for the new date and time. That's Thursday, June 20th. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs>